pressure needed to just stop osmosis is the osmotic pressure of the solution. Why is it important? Because um, there is a clinical application to that. You know that patients that are suffering from cirrhosis or they have impaired liver or any sort of liver disease, um, and when we, when the um, concentration of plasma proteins are low, because these plasma proteins are osmotically active, they are draining or they are pulling out water from our interstitial tissue, so they don't let water to accumulate in our tissues. If the concentration of these plasma proteins are low, then um, a situation happens, so-called edema. Now, edema is when it can be due to a lot of um, things, like, for example, inflammation or other things. But in, in case of um, those patients that are suffering from impaired liver or liver disease, what is happening, concentration of plasma protein is low, for example, albumin is low, and then, um, and then water is f moving from our uh, vessels into the interstitial, in, inter interstitium, and then it is staying and accumulating there, and as you can see here, um, there, is a, there is an edema in these patients. All right, now another concept is molarity, molality, osmolality, osmolarity, and tonicity. What is the difference in, uh, in between these terms? Now, the only way that I think makes sense and can make it easier for you to understand is looking um, at how they are actually calculated. So basically, molarity, osmolarity, molality, and osmolality all of them are measures of concentration. Now, molarity talks about the volume um, of the total solution, so solute plus solution combined together, and molality is about mass of solute and solvent separately. Now, let's, le let's have a look here. You see molarity, and in molarity, when we are um, calculating that, we put moles over one liter of solution. This is very important, solution. Meanwhile, when we are talking about molality, we are putting moles over one kilogram of solvent, not solution, solvent. Now, let's compare osmolarity and osmolality. Now, you see osmo, so we put osmoles in here, and then we put um, one liter of solution, solution underneath. This is osmolarity, very similar to molarity, um, and osmolality is when we put osmoles over one kilogram of solvent again. The same concept happened in molality when we had one kilogram of solvent. So the other term is tonicity. What is tonicity? The term actually, the, the term tonicity um, is to describe effect of solution on the osmotic movement of water. So here, um, let me give you an example. Here we have uh, red blood cells, and let's imagine we put this red blood cell into a hypotonic solution. What does hypotonic mean? It means that there are um, lower concentration of molecules in these solutions. Now what happens is that membrane is working like a semi-permeable membrane, like what happened in a small in description of osmosis. Now here, water, if we place this um, um, red blood cell into this solution, water tends to move from this hypotonic solution into the cell, into the red blood cell. Why? Because there, there is higher concentration of molecules inside the red blood cell. So what happens, water continues to um, diffuse inside to, to get inside this uh, red blood cell, and eventually this red blood cell bursts. And this process is called hemolysis. The other um, thing that we have to consider is placing red blood cell in a hypertunic solution. Hypertunic solution is when we have higher concentration of molecules outside red blood cells. So what happens in this case is that water from red blood cell tends to move out, getting into that solution. And what is happening to the red blood cell is that it's a, a, um, its volume is um, getting, it's actually shrinking, it's getting smaller, and this uh, process is called crenation. All right, now what is um, clinical application of this? 
So you know that we have um, different types of intravenous uh, fluids and uh, they are generally isotonic to blood. What does isotonic mean? Isotonic means that the concentration of molecules in this solution is similar to what we have inside our body, in inside the cells of our bodies. Now common intravenous fluids are normal saline and 5% dextrose. They are widely used in different um, types of um, like when, when we want to um, prescribe intravenous fluids. Um, other types of um, isotonic solutions, which is also frequently used in hospitals, is Ringer's uh, lactate, and it contained lactate, sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium ions to more closely resembles um, the electrolytes of our body and in our plasma. So, but meanwhile, we have other kinds of intravenous fluid that are not isotonic. For example, mannitol, you can see the photo here, mannitol is derived from the sugar mannose and is sometimes given intravenously because it is osmotically active and it's prescribed to those patients that are having cerebral edema um, and it helps with drawing water from um, swallowing tissue, in this case as, um, when, when there is a cerebral edema um, present in patients. For example, in patients that um, had trauma or stroke, um, we prescribe this um, intravenous fluid.